Hello, my name is Paul Pearson. My name's Jill Pearson. I'm Lisa Morgan, a partner and head of the nursing care team at Hugh James. Kathleen was my mother. And she was my mother-in-law. Mrs Pearson was in a care home in Cheshire. The family approached us because they'd been paying significant sums in care fees and realised that potentially Mr Pearson's mother may be eligible for full NHS funding. My mum was born in the early 1920s. She retired just as we had our children. She helped us out an awful lot when the children were young and it was greatly, greatly appreciated. We went to what they call a memory clinic and they said, yes, Kathleen has got Alzheimer's. Prescribed the medicine, off you go. We had no outside support to say, well, we're here now, this is a possible. It was an entirely new sphere for us because we had no idea. What advice we did get was from what we had on the internet. We had carers going in but she refused any support whatsoever. It was really hard that this kind lady had developed into the sort of person that she was now. Whatever we did didn't seem to have an effect. Whenever we reached out to perhaps professional bodies, some were unable to help, some tried to help which, which, which didn't work. All the stress and the, and the strain and the pressure uh, comes on the, the carers, either either professionally or mm. in most cases, and in our case particularly, within the family. We looked around at our local homes and found a care home that specialised in Alzheimer's care. Within two days, one day, her memory of having her home was completely gone. I think she was getting what she needed. She was getting every one of her needs looked after by other people. That was eventually the end of a long five years. All of the stress of everything around Alzheimer's had been lifted and we could enjoy each other's company again. It was, from my point of view personally, a big relief. She had been in the home for about a week and a half and thus for social services arranged a financial review whereby we had to say what she had, where she had it, a home and everything else. Basically, Mr and Mrs Pearson, how is she going to fund herself? She will be self-funding in the home. We didn't know about continuing health care. The only action that we had was to sell a home to fund a care. Continuing healthcare is a package of care which is funded by the NHS, which means that the full cost of someone's care fees are paid by the NHS, regardless of the individual's wealth. If someone needs long-term care because their main need is for health needs opposed to social needs, the NHS should be responsible for the full cost of the care. Nobody had actually said to us, have you thought about this? Have you explored this? It wasn't really until after she'd funded herself for six years that we seriously thought we really must look into retrospective continuing health care. It's a common misconception that if someone needs to go into long-term care, they have to meet the full cost of their care if they've got a means to do so. However, the NHS should firstly consider if they are responsible for that individual and if they should meet the individual's health needs. There's also a misconception that someone only receives this funding end of life, which is untrue, and it's not on the basis of diagnosis. So for example, if you've been diagnosed with an illness and that's the reason why you go into care, that isn't a reason to get full funding. You're looking at the nature and the type of care you require and whether the NHS should be responsible. Over the whole period, we think approximately 240,000, almost a quarter of a million, was paid in, funded by the house, funded by the, the various uh, old age pensions, even having those four sources of income coming in every four weeks, a lot of people are nowhere near that. We felt, despite 
our ability to research things that we needed some legal support. We started looking at organisations that supported people looking for retrospective health care. You, James, seem to have a good reputation. They'd got a nursing department, so we actually filled in a huge piece of documentation and sent it off to you, James, who said that we did have a case and they took it on on a no-win, no-fee process. The family approached us to ask for a current assessment and also to look at Mrs Pearson's needs from when she first entered the care home to see if she should be reimbursed any of the cost of the care. You, James, supported us enormously. We've had four or five reviews and all took place after Kath's death. All we could keep doing was reshuffling all the horrible moments of her life. We would always have a conversation, a phone call, what we needed to focus on. They did everything that they possibly could to prepare us for them. I'm pleased to say that following a number of appeals, we were successful in obtaining retrospective funding for Mrs Pearson. She received funding for the last eight months of her life. We also, following a number of appeals, were successful in obtaining a year's refund of care fees and we were successful in obtaining £30,000 back for the family. They were amazing to work with. We had an appeal for the ones that had been turned down. You, James, issued advice about the appeal, but more importantly for us, they kept saying, we will continue to help on the same basis. We still think you have a claim and we'll carry on supporting you. We know that we'd have given in far sooner because it just got too much. Families can do this independently. However, our experience shows that families approach us because it is a very complex process. It's littered with deadlines. It's complicated. It's very emotive. You are challenging decisions that your loved one is not ill enough to receive this funding. So we remove that for families and we assist them through the process. We've been working in this area for 15 years and are very averse in challenging the NHS on decisions and overturning them. We offer a free initial assessment and on the basis of that we'll advise the family if we feel they have a case. We will then offer a number of funding options, one of which will be a no win no fee agreement. The no win no fee agreement is um, a percentage of the money that we recover. This provides family with certainty. Family knows that regardless of the amount of time that we may spend on a case, they only pay a percentage of any money that we recover plus VAT always ask for continuing health care to be considered if your relative needs long-term care. Don't take no for an answer. Information's key. Ask questions, do your research. We would recommend you, James, to anybody watching this. We're just talking as ordinary people about our honest experience of the whole process. I don't think there's anything more that Hugh James could have done to support my my mum and us and the whole family any more than they did.